we do evaluate ourselves uh, every uh, from time to time on this subject, but also it's important for servants, and as well, um, even the, the type of visitation that we do as a bishop, as a priest, as a servant, is slightly different. There are some common themes, which we'll talk about, and some things that are different. So what we'll just talk about is the importance of visitation, the types of visitations, and then some of the goals and strategies that may help. It's just some of the things that will help us to maximize um, the benefit in the visit. So importance of visitations, um, as you know, not just giving a lesson and give you a talk and leave, very different than if I visit. Um, and the, we used to always ask the number of lessons that you remember from your Sunday school uh, servants when we were younger compared to their visitations. Like, they may forget everything that we teach them. We hope that they remember. But the visitations, sometimes every minute of the visitation, that it's ingrained uh, in them, especially certain, certain of, uh, children more than, more than others. So it is one of the most important uh, aspects about uh, service. Um, and when you think about it, very few people will come to their home to visit them specifically, right? They may have some friends, but um, time to time, and they may not stay, right? So when, there's a, when we are going specifically to visit, whether a servant, priest, or it does make a very significant impact. So it's one of the cornerstones that we have uh, in, our, uh, in our church. And something unique about the Coptic Orthodox Church is this, right? Visitations in even other Orthodox churches, other Christian churches, is very rare, but why our church, I think, one of the pillars, why is that it's so strong, is because it's very pastoral, and at the heart of its pastoral care is the visitations. Same thing I can say for the different parishes. The parishes that put an emphasis on this will have a strong service, hence, no question. Um, <clears throat> so it's both, it's not the Lord, he um, spoke to the crowds, there were thousands, but also what we have more in the Gospels are the personal encounters, many visitations that the Lord did, and that becomes our model in our service uh, that we have. And the conversations as well. Sometimes we will take a conversation like the Lord with the Samaritan woman as a model of evangelism. Or the Lord uh, even with St. Paul or St. Peter, how to correct servants <laughs> or how to ex examine ourselves in our service. Um, the encounters of the Lord Jesus Christ with the individuals is of great benefit. We also have the sermons, for example, of St. Paul in the book of Acts, or St. Peter, um, and they help us in how to give lessons, how to preach homilies. Um, but So we learn uh, from this uh, on, uh, in, in many uh, aspects. The value of every soul, as we also see, that is very precious and valuable in the sight of God. When the shepherd leaves the 99 to go after the one, it is a lesson for the one, but it's also a lesson for the 99. So every one of the 99 will feel that if I go out, <laughs> the shepherd will also do the same for me, because each one is beloved in his sight. Sometimes we'll feel, say, I don't have, like, the time is very short, and we'll get to that at the end. I know the concerns and the practicality of visitations. So I'll talk about the ideal in the beginning, and then I'll talk about some of the things at the end. But the importance that we leave everything for one, that is part of our, what we learn from the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, because when he was with the crowds and the woman with the flow of blood touched him, he stopped. And he said, who touched me? And so they, the, the disciples said, what are you, what are you talking Everyone. Like, have you been in those crowds in Egypt or one of our churches on a certain occasion? It doesn't make any sense. But he wanted to make it clear to her that what you did because of your need and my grace that I gave to you is not forgettable. Because you yourself are of value. That's why he said, you are of more value than many sparrows. And um, the precious, I uh, was looking in the epistle of St. Peter, 
he repeats it um, several times, this word precious. Precious promises, the precious congregation, the precious blood of Christ, to show the value um, of each of us in the, the eyes of God. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. He's speaking to the Bishop St. Paul, this final, um, this is taking from the reading. When there's um, a bishop who departs, or an apostle in the cynic star, this is the reading, because it's, it's instructed to the, the bishops. Um, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. So one of the final lessons for St. Paul to the bishops was to say, how that you take care of each one of the flock, because he purchased them with uh, his own blood. So it's the value of every soul and also the uniqueness of every soul. That's what sometimes makes it a challenge in the service because they are all different. Nowadays they're all more and more different. <laughs> the unique personalities, which is the beauty <laughs> of the soul, if we understand it properly, because if they were all the same, it would not be very interesting, right? And also after a while, if they think like us and talk like us and like live like us, maybe some people will be happy, but <laughs> a lot of people are not. We're all different, and to understand the uniqueness of it is part of our, our and that's why it's a challenge, right? Um, what the beauty is, though, is how that we serve one another and complement one another. And it takes a while, um, I think, in the service, and maybe also a lot of experience and talents, how to make that knit together, which is what uh, we'll conclude with, but that's what St. Paul says the church is. So, you know, when you do, anyone does the uh, weaving like they used to do in the old days, but, or braids, when you braid, which I still don't know how to do, <laughs> but, but I, I'm sure most of you uh, have, have to do it at some point, but how they enter, because if you make a mistake, it's not going to work, and someone's going to be very upset. <laughs> um, and so that's how the same thing in the church. How are we knit together and how is it weaved the inter of, of our lives as well as our service? Um, uh, let me see how to put... One second. You don't want to see all these messages. You'll get more distracted than I. <laughs> um, okay. Um, also, when it's mentioned... In the Gospel of John, St. John emphasizes that he needed to go through Samaria. And you've heard this before. He didn't actually, in the original Greek, it was necessary for him to go to uh, Samaria. It's necessary, not because that's the only road. There's actually, it's not that, there's a more direct road when we were there a few months ago. We took a different path and we saw the side road. They're like, oh yeah, if you take that, that'll go to Samaria. So it's a parallel road, but he needed to go because he cared about the city of Samaria, the region of Samaria, the Samaritans, but more specifically for the Samaritan woman. Because the Samaritans would have heard, but they wouldn't have accepted her. And so this is what she discovered in her encounter. That's why St. John spends the whole chapter, it's the longest or second longest gospel reading that we say in the year. We say it a few times. The church selects it in the fast, in the Holy Fifty, in, the, in Pentecost. Um, that and the blind man. And the church loves these two chapters uh, because of this personal encounter. And when she has a personal encounter, the church says, just a few chapters later, he'll be baptized, and, or she will be baptized and enter into the, the fold of Christ. So this is why it's necessary. If he needed to go through Samaria, then sometimes I say, okay, then I needed to go through Chino, or I need to go through wherever it is. Fresno, <laughs> although I don't like <laughs> going all the way to Fresno. Um, don't tell them. This is, very <laughs> this is just very hard to go. <laughs> I have to leave everything, but sometimes it's necessary. Um, this is not being recorded. <laughs> I will go to Fresno <laughs> very soon. Very soon. I actually like going. It just takes two days to go through one church, as opposed to I could visit five, six churches, as opposed to, but that's the same thing, the sacrifice that it takes for one. So to reach our heavenly Jerusalem, we need to go through our visitations in Samaria. Um, one time I was uh, talking to some of the kids uh, in one of the churches, 
and Abuna Tadros was visiting, so I told them, oh, I have to go, I have to go uh, meet Abuna Tadros. So one of the kids told me, he said, oh, I love this priest. I said, how do you know him? He said, he's the only priest that ever visited me in my life. I mean, he was like 10 years old. But I thought about it. I said, if, of all the priests, like in the diocese, and Abuna it was just visiting. <laughs> but see, and this was years ago, so he was probably like five years old. So I remembered, I said, yes, and Abuna Tadros, he told us some, I will tell you some of the things, lessons that, uh, that he told us one time when I was, uh, started uh, serving uh, with Abuna. He said, okay, uh, prepare some visitations for me. So I spent the whole day on the phone trying to prepare the visitations. Um, and so at the end, he said, okay, how many, how many houses? I was very happy. I said, there were four. And he was very disappointed. He said, only four? I'm going to spend the whole night in four visitations. I said, they're the only ones that like, were free. <laughs> Everyone else gave an excuse here and there. He said, okay, it's fine. We'll, we'll, spend, we'll, we'll do the four visitations. But, and he was in his probably 70s at the time. Um, and so it was a good lesson, the first lesson, how important for him is the, and this is every day for, for Abuna. Um, that's why most probably he's visited many of the homes just in our diocese, uh, not to mention the others. Uh, <clears throat> Saint Severus of Antioch, a couple of weeks ago we commemorated, he, is, he speaks about the importance, he said, the Lord Jesus Christ sent the apostles to preach to all the ends of the earth. And how important also is it is for us to fulfill that we should also toil and go by our feet uh, spontaneously to those who are in need and teaching what is useful for salvation. So, so um, this gospel reading, you know, uh, when there's a commemoration of an apostle during the week, last week and the week before we had many of them because uh, the, the month of Abib and before for the Feast of the Apostles, so we read the Pauline epistle from Romans chapter 10, and we also read uh, from um, the psalm, which quotes the psalm, uh, that their voices went to all the ends of the earth, uh, and blessed are those who preach the gospel of peace. Because they were preaching, they were running to all the ends of the earth, and their voices went to all the ends of the earth. So their feet, <laughs> we, we emphasize their feet because it was not easy. They didn't have cars and planes like, and trains like we do. So they had to, to walk sometimes. Yes, they have a horse or donkey or something. But most of the time was walking. And their, so their feet went through all the ends of the earth. And their voices, whether or not even their preaching, their evangelism, went to the all. So St. Severe says we have to do the same a few hundred years later so that we can receive the same blessing. And that is part of our service. Uh, that's why they went two by two whether for health conditions, whether they needed support, whether to make sure that they saw everyone, right? And also sometimes the visitations, as we'll get to. I don't She's been saying this for two days. <laughs> um, so also sometimes we need to, we, it helps to have two servants so that we can serve effectively in some region, two priests most of the time as well. That's like the standard, so that um, we can... Uh, be complete in our service wherever we are, even if it's a visitation. Um, the third reason that we do visitations because it will be the account that we have to give, right? Um, we used to read, it happened one night, have you read this poem by His Holiness Pope Shenouda the third, or meditate when he was a servant and he had to give an account, he had a vision where he went and has to answer to the angels said how come you didn't visit how come you didn't take care and it was a it's a very painful conversation and so he's not allowed into the area where the servants are although he thought he was a servant he realized that no no he wasn't serving them like these people who were in paradise were faithfully serving so it's we used to read it uh, among the servants uh, regularly um with not few tears. <laughs> um, this is a good reminder in the beginning of this, uh, we used to read in the beginning of the, of the, of the year, the Coptic year, um, as inspiration for us in our service. Um, <clears throat> uh, also, the Lord mentioned um, in the Gospel, uh, here of Matthew, um, that when you visit the sick, 
when you visit those in prison, like you visited me. But he was very specific about the visitations. Uh, and I know, like, we don't visit the prison that often. <laughs> Hopefully it's not your Sunday school <laughs> that you're visiting. But sometimes we do. I'm, the few times that, you know, we had the opportunity to visit, they are very blessed. And most of the time, even when we're visiting them, we spend a lot of time in the waiting room more than we do like in the area where you're visiting the person in prison because those people are in need just as much in um, St. Avenue and not too far from here. Uh, they have the prison across the street. And every week on this day, Saturday, you have lines of cars of people just waiting because they can only visit on that day. And many times, those people were in just as much need um, as those inside. One time, I, Abuna... Uh, was giving communion i wasn't a priest so i went with him and i remember seeing the first like this encounter that when a went in to give communion there was few people that was asking me about the priest of communion about who's inside how do we get it? like there's a lot of needs in the prison this is just one aspect but also in the hospitals um this is part where the Lord Jesus Christ said, you visited me. There's a, a common saying, especially in Upper Egypt, when the priest visits the home, they say, yes, which is not common here. And and what the priest in his mind, or, or affects, but the opposite, Christ is the opposite, right? So the idea is that Christ is in our midst when we visit each other. So we are visiting Christ, and many times in the hospital, if you see, you will see Christ there, right? And the same time, when, they, when we go to them, also they see Christ serving and taking care of them. This is the church. So in the visitation, yes, we both encounter Christ. And that's why the visitations are very joyful uh, encounter with the Lord, like in essence, that's, that's what it is. Types of visitations, um, there's different types, regular, occasions, lost sheep, encouragement. Um, it's a good, um, uh, Abraham, when he was uh, presenting, he kind of gave this overview, so I will borrow it uh, with gratitude. Um, regular visitations, this comprehensive uh, service which we're trying to reach every soul, it takes a lot of work, especially now as the church is growing, um, how do we visit all the congregation members that we serve? It sounds easy. <laughs> you can ask a woman, because sometimes we don't really, we think we know, but there's so many people also that we don't know or we know and we can't reach them. I remember when I was serving in one of the other cities, I had a list, so we inherit the list, right, in September. And I remember there's always a few that either they don't answer the phone, they don't allow you to visit, they're too busy, uh, or <laughs> change number. I remember some, I had a, a, some some of them, like the number doesn't work. I had to find them. It's not they, there was no internet, we were not really functioning at the time. So we just have a phone number and a name. That's it. And if the phone number doesn't work, you just have a name. <laughs> so sometimes even we have to be creative to seek every. Because uh, I remember once I was in the church and then I heard the name. So I said, "What do you mean? They're here. They're in there. <laughs> they're in the church." So uh, we have the opportunity. Um, <clears throat> so we need to be attentive as the ones that are in the class, but also those who are not uh, present, and how that we visit each child at least once a year, at least once a year. Uh, when I was in Boston, they had a system where they had to visit every member of the congregation during the fast. So we have six weeks, and at the time, they had almost uh, 1,000 families four priests. So I told them, how do you do it? So they told me, there's different ways to do it. Um, and the visitation is, is, is short. They would combine sometimes families if they have to, so that they can finish the first time. And of course, for the people, when I would ask them after, so when a visit, you said, yes, but only once a year. I said, well, <laughs> so they, after a while, this became so common. So they added another round, because um, it was only in the six weeks, right? Um, but what do you do in the rest of the time? I'll show you. It's the other types of visitations. But if you have a certain period of the year where we're focused on the regular visitations, it lessens up or easens up the time for the re remainder, which is essential. And also, if we are systematic, then the people in your Sunday school or in the church will know. 
right? They know the system. It only took a couple of years before all the people knew this is their system um, uh, in, of, of the visit. Um, so this is a comprehensive survey. The, the second type for visitations, there's joyful occasions, which usually uh, you, I don't have to tell you to go to the birthdays, to the weddings, to the graduations, uh, before and after, like there's a lot of occasions and it's important for the servants to be at some of these you know some of the time especially for some of the families that are very sensitive um, and those are usually not the ones that have hundreds of people at their events they usually have four or five people at their events that's where the servant will if we have to go um, there's also some problems whether it's in the family whether it's in the school whether it's in the church personally with them so this is probably one of the most important times when we go and that's when like you know when we greet the people at the end of the church uh, with the eulogia that's when the priests they have the detection the radar <laughs> they're able to detect who definitely needs like immediately and also for the servant in the Sunday school you will know right so these when there's an issue the preventative care right the, the physician who's doing as, uh, the preventative uh, care will be able to detect the problems in advance. So in the blessing of a new home, uh, we usually go. Um, sickness uh, and departures, uh, death, grief. Um, of course, for the children, the last it's, it's obvious, uh, so you know how long that this uh, takes. Um, and sometimes even the grieving, not necessarily immediately, like I know there's, there's waves of people that go, um, when it's a youth or uh, say a parent or a relative um, but it's also important in between the events so not just in the departure not just on the third day not just on the 40 day but in between those gaps is critical time usually for us that's when they get forgotten and that's when you help us because we have to go on those I mean that's the 40 day <laughs> There's an event. so but that's where the, the priest the clergy are present but sometimes the gaps in between and we know in between we hear about those servants that are faithful in between they say so and so they're coming and they're bringing food and they're asking about me and they're taking like the church when it when it doesn't leave them it is one time i was visiting a widow and she told me abuna you have to come here i said no i, w I wanted to come she had one son um she said no this is your job <laughs> and it's mentioned in the gospel but nobody else called or asked or cared i said no no they care they care i'm trying to find anyone in the church <laughs> i had to contact several servants um it was a little better but like i always remember thinking okay yeah who's if people that's what happened in the book of acts when they were neglecting the widows so they said okay we have to have deacons we, co we consecrate them so they can take care of them faithfully and we can go and do the preaching and the other things that we have to do because we can't live and be with them on a daily basis, the, the windows. So that was the vision of the church and those are the servants, the servants, uh, the diakonia, when you, that's the word, the ministry for the deacon which takes care of all of these uh, needs. Not just the department, but all of us <laughs> as fulfilling that ministry. Um, and the impact, like uh, the impact that we have even on the, sometimes, you know, when they text and call, we try as much, uh, I admit, we try as much as we can, <laughs> but even the few things will, will have an impact. Sometimes if we don't respond early enough or, you know, on every single occasion, they can get very sensitive. There are certain people that are very sensitive, so I, I do my best <laughs> for those cases. Um, knowing sometimes it's not um, uh, you say, enough. It never seems to be enough, but we do what we can to uh, for each uh, soul. Um, so how do we care for each one? The last is the visitations of encouragement. Um, how do we encourage them, especially if they're away from the church or if there's a challenge? Um, and this is probably one of the hardest um, uh, to, to find the time for. Uh, these individuals, um, they're not necessarily lost, right, and not away. They may be coming, but they may need extra support. Those visitations uh, are also important. So some of the strategies in the visitation. Um, <clears throat> the clear goal, as we said, 
um, uh, this is the model or the verse that is the uh, I guess the call uh, or the symbol uh, for his eminence him we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus so what uh, we are doing in how when we preach we present each person before to God in a sense the, like the servant you know like his holiness in the he had an angel that was presenting the soul to like giving a kind of orientation of what's happening in the paradise and the servant has a similar role <laughs> for those who are in because the servant is an angel it's a messenger so in, in, in one, what way do we present the people we serve to the kingdom? Uh, and this consists, what St. Paul says here, of warning and teaching. And so I will try just to speak about um, these two aspects. Um, when we warn every man, that means how to identify in the visit before or during where are some of the things that need warning or caution so say if there's weakness of faith some people some of the youth yes they have a challenge of faith and they go through these periods and that may need to re require a specific visit or visits or calls to handle this crisis of faith right and it's a very important <laughs> visit um, and we have to prepare for it in a very special way um, whether it's readings whether it's stories or encounters, how to bring about uh, this challenges of faith, some uh, to be brought to repentance or they realize what they're doing, they're not living, usually for the older youth, um, they're going astray a little bit, season of rebellion, how to bring back, uh, because it's easier, I say there's more, greater impact that a servant can have who's outside than the family itself right even if you say the exact same thing that their parents are saying it comes with a little bit greater weight it shouldn't until they kind of realize yes their parents love them care for them they're also wise they, they do speak truth <laughs> in love but and they can't always just discount the voice and they say wait did you talk to my parents they're like no I'm, I'm talking to you they didn't tell me uh, what to tell you so then they realize uh this how to also identify what problems are, or sometimes if there's a certain issue that we can even help in solving, whether it be at school, in, in, improper friendship, uh, the lack of desire, lack of motivation, frustration, whatever it is. Um, and how we can bridge a communication gap if it's in the class, or if it's in the church, or if it's in the family, right, with that personal encounter. When the Lord Jesus Christ was speaking with the Samaritan woman, what did she do immediately after? She went to the people who were rejecting her and told them, come and see, like she, she had the boldness to break that barrier, right? She was going in the middle of the day to escape. She didn't want to hear the accusations. They probably also weren't going to let her free. Like she couldn't go on the common days to get the water from the well. She had to go in the time where, and probably very rushed, but the opposite happened with the encounter. And so that's why if there's a communication gap, that there's a gap between the, um, within the church, like I said, or the family or, or otherwise, a servant, we help to bridge uh, this. Teaching every man, so th in all wisdom. This is not just, um, like we don't do the visitations just for problems, right? But it helps us, and I'll show you in some of the strategies, how can we help when you say to bring everyone perfect in Christ. So there's different aspects in the spiritual life that the servant can identify in a visitation that helps us to see where the focus needs to be. Not necessarily only for that person, that soul, but it can also help in a general sense. So say how to read the Bible regularly. How can I detect in the visit that yes, they're reading their Bible regularly, they know where it is, because when they say, okay, open your Bibles, they have to go find... Uh, where, do we have one? Do we not have one? <laughs> they bring the Arabic one. And we tell them, no, no this is, where's your Bible? I said, what do you mean? And I remember in one of the visits, like they didn't have one at all. And the special background, usually, it, was, it wasn't a language problem. There was no, they had no English Bible. 
big so of course next visit we used to go with extra bibles um uh, in the, the the trunk but um usually uh usually like i said that's 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 rare but usually there's there's a bible and we we read from it now we have the phone so even if you don't we can read from the bible um regular attendance at church of course that's one of the i don't have to um tell you that's one of the things that we usually talk about that usually comes up but that's not the only one how they have prayer because they will see like especially the free prayer at the end that you will pray with them and their prayer corner so i say part of the visitation is also to go to their room to see where they pray how they pray and usually we help them i know in covid it was very common but even after how they how do they have their system of prayer and reading every day so if you if you, you can tell immediately when you enter the room if that's there that's not there right there's no icon there's no bible there's no this there's no agreement there. so so we help them to set up that as that's part of their life um and sometimes when there's two servants uh, one of the servants may go specifically just to the room for this while the other distract the parents and <laughs> the parents or if there's something personal uh, and i'll get to it or a problem a concern that they have it's not brought up in front of the children ever <laughs> right so that's that's the time where where that could be done and um uh, so we would take turns if it was in a visit with the servant that i'm serving with um so who deals with the parents unless one of them really is good with the parents more and the other one with the children then we can do that that's why the disciples went young and old like saint john with saint peter uh, for that reason they could reach all ages um <clears throat> Uh, also in confession, uh, a certain age where they are, uh, we want to make sure they start confessing. Uh, we used to do it as a general rule sometimes in the Sunday school where we teach them about confession and then afterwards they go and confess. You could get 70, 80 percent depending on the church, but there's certain that are lacking. So, and I remember one would tell us don't force. So in the visitation, that could be brought up as well. I notice that you don't, what's wrong? And w they may need a little bit more encouragement until they're ready and prepared. They can. There could be something else behind it if there's a very major problem that there's uh, a fear about uh, encountering the, 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 or speaking with the priest. And that can be, you can definitely help. It's one of the best things a servant can do to help break that barrier. Because that that will help them much more than all the lessons that we will give, um, that they have a strong bond with their father of confession. Um, also, uh, sometimes if there's a special activity that we'll have in the Sunday school, um, retreat, sports, YC, whatever it is, sometimes that helps. Or in starting a new service, uh, like servants prep or mission, sometimes we'll bring it up. That's not the main goal. Um, but if I know that this activity or service will really help them, like say, for example, there's a child who doesn't have any friends, right? And they don't like coming because they don't know anyone. So some of those activities, they're designed <laughs> for that social aspect. So I, will, I may go specifically to encourage them to attend this activity so that it will help them in, for a long time. The same thing if I know that they should be serving and there's, there's no desire. Or, so it may need a special uh, talk or visitation for this. Again, that will help them uh, much uh, more. Um, <clears throat> so in our life as Christians, we do not look back at the beginnings, but forward to the endings. Paul's beginning was bad, but his ending was good. Judas's beginning, on the other hand, was worthy of commendation, but his ending was miserable because of his treason. The life of a Christian is the true ladder of Jacob, on which angels ascend and descend, while the Lord stands on the top, stretching his hands to support us lest we slide and puts his eyes on those who struggle and ascend the painful steps let us then be aware of sin lest we die so saint jerome saying this uh, because the jacob's ladder and if i can even relate it to the servant that helps when you're growing from glory to glory and ascending the spiritual ladder the servant is conscious about it right we know that where you can assess like a good physician, the health, spiritual health of the... And we have a plan for each of them, I hope, right? There's a general plan, like when we go and say everyone should, you know, eat certain things, and we stay away from sugar, we stay free from this, and there's a general plan. But then if you're a nutritionist, right, for the individual, say, you know what, this, 
what do you do exactly in your <laughs> and you'll be able to help and modify of course with um, the the priest as well does this in uh, the time uh, of confession but we also as servants we assess especially for the lesson like we may know that they need more emphasis on prayer because if it's not there there's a problem or on bible and so we may with consultation with the priests make adjustments and modification to to the what's being taught to emphasize certain things right uh, not just on a whim and <laughs> but there may be certain deep needs uh, that yeah we will put aside the curriculum maybe <laughs> for a little bit i don't say this public uh, <laughs> I don't say public but if again with consultation if there's a need that's actually all the curriculum was designed with that in mind and in a few years yes we're going to make modifications because we know there's a need right why do we put the summer curriculum separate to fill those gaps in general so we give special attention and i know sometimes it works very well and sometimes it doesn't and that's why we hear from you and we have some time after to hear how good <laughs> this is being done or lack thereof uh, how to reach every place um, we mentioned that uh, this already, that uh, he went to every end uh, of the earth. This is the psalm that I mentioned. I was looking in, um, we actually, um, sometimes the citations are off in in, uh, uh, in Spirit and Truth, so we have to fix that as well. Um, <clears throat> but like I said, this that psalm and, and Romans, though they're fixed for uh, the apostle. Um and to reach every child. Uh, we used to even divide, uh, when we went to the four visitations, Abuna Tedras gave me a comment at the end. He said, these homes are very far apart. Like, I could have visited 10 homes. So we tried to do as much as you can in the same zip code, same area, when you are visiting, so you can maximize uh, the time. Uh, so that helps uh, in groups. And, and the more that we plan the visitations, and the, time, the more effective and efficient that you can do. And I also mentioned sometimes you can combine. Uh, if you're doing the general visitation, you can combine homes uh, or two, uh, two kids together uh, if possible. Um, we also use uh, the database um, to help us track who we visited, when we visited, and also if there's any concern. The priests have a way to, to, to do some of those notations. Um, but God willing, if we use it properly, when we visit a family, we would have known that you visited the family, which helps. And we know when you visited. Because sometimes we'll be in a visit, um, like I'll, I'll, t I'll go to a visit and like, oh yeah, Abuna was just here yesterday. So I said to myself, if I knew that, I would have, there was another person I could have visited. Um, and it could be a priest from a different region. But if we were using it properly, again, we can make sure that, the, that we can visit and this family was lived very far. <laughs> so, so I remember, like, there's 10 people I could have visited in this location. Um, so we want to maximize the efficiency collectively. Um, and, like I said, how we can plan better. Um, <clears throat> uh, I mentioned that uh, we should have some time for the parents and some time for the children. Um, general, usually, I mean, we give about 70% general in the family. That includes prayer, that includes Bible, uh, reading the Bible. It includes like so, just getting to know them. Um, and, and if you can, the 30%, which is one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if And that time can be divided, like I said, if there's two servants. But you can tell the parents in the head, I need to spend some time with so-and-so. If you're by yourself, we usually recommend two. But if you're by, we say you need to spend some time with them, and then we take them, if you can, in the room. Um, if there is an issue or problem in the family, it may be better to like take them for ice cream or something. We've had to do this on rare occasions, but it is effective. Um, if there's a big problem, you can tell, right? He doesn't want to say anything in front of the parents or she doesn't want to bring. So out of the environment, they are completely different. Um, and, and so we will we'll do this uh, on occasion. And like I said, it brings... It changes every, and that, and one conversation like that, you'll notice a complete difference in the class. It builds the relationship uh, from uh, there. Um, <clears throat> how to avoid pitfalls. 
So how to put a time limit for each uh, visit. That's why in the first type of visitation, the comprehensive visit, there is no meals, right? If they ask for a meal, and there's certain families that insist on a meal, so there's a certain period of time. I do the visitations in Holy 50, like with that in mind. There's weddings, there's occasions, everyone's eating. Anyways, <laughs> they spend two, three hours eating. Um, but during the fast, no, during the fast, we have, we're going quickly. One time I was visiting a church, so they said, how many visits do you want? I took, it was on a Saturday. So I said, I need 10 visits. So they did the 10 visits, and then they planned in between. I said, you can do one meal at this time, so they know that we're coming, or at the very end, because, you know, the, they're going to faint, the priests. Are <laughs> they actually rotated, because there's two priests, so one of them for the first half. <laughs> but it, it helps um, that we can, we can arrange it that way, but they know typically we don't do this type of visit. We just need to uh, uh, cover the main families, for example. But for the special occasions, if Salat I mean, if you're going to go to that, they're going to definitely eat. <laughs> so for those occasions, like, you'll know. Um, but for a regular visit, uh, no. Um, the second thing for the complaints, I said we don't, we don't accept complaints in front of the children. We change the topic very quickly. You defend, you say all the good things that you can think of <laughs> about the children in front of them. And then if the parent is insisting then that's okay, no, I need to talk to them separate, let me go to the room, and, and then we, we, because there are some parents, they won't even one, two, warning, and so we know that's the problem <laughs> in this situation. So that child from then on needs a lot of encouragement, a lot of support, a lot of positive reinforcement, because that environment is not going to build the character, Christian character, they're gonna end up to like, usually, don't like the church, don't like the priest, don't like this, it's all just negative. So it needs a, a, a joyful disposition, um, and that's the and that's the environment that we want to you know you know, have, especially in the visit. So they'll enjoy the visitation. Um, they're not afraid. They're not going to escape because when they get older, and like oh no, no, Abun is coming, or the servant is coming, I'm going to leave. <laughs> it's just going to be a very, <laughs> and then I'm going to have to have all these rules that I have to read the Bible, and like it's just going to become uh, more. Uh, rules and more failure in their sense than, like I said, what they're doing out of their own love for for God. How do we avoid the politics? Because also sometimes we sit down, by the time we sit down, there's like talk about the politics of the church, war in, in Ukraine, all of this. There could be some time for that. But the servant will not be, end up to get distracted and all of this and leave um, the important thing, which we are there for, for Christ. Sometimes it's important to help them put a spiritual focus on the problems in the world, right? So we can do that, right? That's why when they bring up you, he says, we're praying for it. Yes, the church, it's a big problem. Yes, the world is going down. Usually, that type of, <laughs> all the world is going. Yes, that's why we have to fast more and pray more. And we may give examples of the goodness in the world as well um, to see how that we can find hope in the difficult situation. So there's there's a place for it. But we don't spend a half an hour speaking politics and then five minutes praying and reading the Bible and then like we lost we lost the, the, the visit. The fourth thing. Um, sometimes telling stories and they will like to tell stories if it's the first type of visit, you might not know each other, so there's a time of orientation. But what will help is that when you're calling beforehand, that you spend some time talking to the parents to get to know them on the phone, and the children, it will save that time of the visit. So the visit is not like just become us, uh, getting to know each other, um, and we can maximize the time for the, for the spiritual, the, the, vis the visitation of Christ. Um, okay, and we mentioned about uh, the problems with the parents, and we may need to, to have a different environment. Um, then personal attachment. This usually happens with the newer servants um, where they're building the personal relationship, but then it becomes just based on personal relationship. Uh, and we give the warning, but uh, usually the older experienced servant can identify it and give some type of uh, direction. Um, the Bible reading. So 15 to 20 minutes we should spend in reading the Bible. Uh, the earlier, the better in the visit, as much as possible. Like, I remember, like, they prefer Abuna Tedros. By the time he sat down, he started in the Bible study. Like, we greeted each other 
<laughs> and he sat down, he's starting talking about Romans or Matthew, whatever. Sometimes if we're doing, like I said, five, six visits, we may do Matthew 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or uh, in another case, if we are reading something in the Sunday school class that we want to encourage them, then we'll, we'll do the same. Or if the family is reading, sometimes some of the families, they go through different chapters, I ask them always, what are you reading? Right? And so when I know, then we'll continue in that schedule. And I'll also be able to ask them, okay, well, what did you learn last time to see how beneficial is that reading uh, that they are doing? Um, uh, so this reinforcement, again, helps very much. Um, so we encourage them to read. Don't correct every mistake, but sometimes, especially the shy kids, will need a little bit of push and encouragement. Um, I whisper to them what's the word, even when they're reading in the church. There's some people they will <laughs> publicize the mistake. But we want to tell them, yeah, you have to fix. Or after when they come to greet, if there's time, I'll tell them this word is this. So they'll know to be very careful. And in a short time, like the, the kids are very quick to learn. Uh, within a couple of months, when they put some energy and focus into it, they'll be uh, fine. Um, also, uh, we will spend a little bit of time after they read on giving reflection. So they don't read too much at once. We give a little bit of reflection and explanation. And then the time to encourage, like you do in Sunday school, but we give time for them with question and answers, see what they got out of it. Because their feedback that in, in the family visit, it's important for the child that you care, like we encourage them to think and process, but also in, in with the parents. So the parents can learn also how maybe they don't know exactly how, so that they can follow this model when they're reading. So you, the parents should give some type of you know, reflection, emphasis, and then ask questions. Some parents just jump to the question answer, and uh, no, they're, they're clueless; like they don't know. <laughs> so, so this this very simple um, will help. Um, and then, like I said, the sequence. Uh, what's the order that we do uh, in Sunday school? Other things. So, for gifts, usually we go with a gift, and it's not just like for the for the home in general. Like if it's a new home, yeah, we'll give a gift for the home. We used to have a system. When I was serving in St. Mina, that uh, because the icons were new, so we would give one year the icon of Christ, everyone gets the icon of Christ, and then the second year we did St. Barry, and then third year, so then by the end they had a whole, like, nice, um, huh? By then they have the you have icons, icon set, and it was the same as the church, so when they pray, it's like they're in the church. But um, the, there's also, especially for the Sunday school, it's slightly different. Yes, when you go into that room, one time Abu Nupshir came and went and there was a poster, it was just a car and I think it was like a drink or something. And Abu Nupshir came and spent like a few minutes looking at it. The child who later told me, he was telling me this, he said, I, I felt so embarrassed, I wanted to rip this <laughs> poster. And all Abu Nupshir said, this is exactly like the world, like this is the world. So he said afterwards, that, that was enough. Um, but we will look and see, like say, make sure there's a cross, like she said, icon, um, candle, whatever that they need, but if none of that is there, so part of the gifts that we will give is to help to prepare them, and then even later on, we say, this is for you. I saw this icon. So the icons that we used to give, um, like I said, can be general, icon of Christ, but th also, uh, when we do the saints module, part of it is we encourage them to have their intercessor saint. So we will give them that if they don't have it. So that will be the perfect gift. And then we start building other things. Uh, we also may give with some spiritual books. If they, um, in the Sunday School curriculum, we have all of these supplements. Sometimes they miss a lesson, so they'll miss the book. So you can bring that gift so they also are not uh, behind in that. Um, and the spiritual journal, I think this is one of the most important things that we had in there. Every um, child, I think, should have it at least for a few years until their spiritual rule is very clear. Then they don't have to write it. They have this accountability. So it, it, they check when they pray the, every day, when they read the Bible every day, when they confess every month, just to make sure that they're on track. So what about the younger ones? Would, would still give them a journal? Uh, so they can't, can, they, can they read or they can't read? <laughs> Right. So what? The moms and the parents might be the ones reading like the Bible story 
Right, right. So in the Bible curriculum, uh, which we're preparing, which is separate, so that they can read the Bible every day, they have a little form that they fill every week before they take into the class, and it, they check, their parents check, and they ask the questions uh, to make sure. That's usually second grade. But this practice, like this, the, the, the regularity that we want as early as possible, so even when they get to second, third grade, they already know I'm reading. Yes. Uh, Mark, yeah. Do we have any of the spiritual journals that you're talking about in print? Like, do we have access to them? Yeah, so this, I just took this from uh, what we have in the Sunday school, you know, on the app where it says the little store. I need another word for it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we have it. So you can order for the for the children. I, I used to have in my in my car some, but I keep running out. So I will, I will remember to bring them. Mm. So that everyone, like all the Sunday school teachers have. I, I normally, um, we should be able to have like a Sunday school cabinet so that all the spiritual verses, yeah. the service will have to go and print and buy, and that way all the servants know where it is, and yeah. uh, we can, it'll encourage the, the visitations if those right. are accessible. We used to have one of the servants... I think I was visiting in, uh, they have this in many churches, but I remember specifically I was in Florida and um, they were showing me the church. They, the, so they had one room, which was just the servant resource center. And then there was a servant at the front. So it's like, you know, you come here and you say, you know, I need some more coffee. So they give you the, so yeah, so they said, you know what, I need St. Marina. Uh, the feast is coming up, I'm visiting. So they go and look, in five seconds, they give you uh, whatever, whatever it is. So, I mean, we can have, we can have um, those, uh, but also I think on our side, because we have all of these, but we're trying to get them all ready by August uh, next month, so that the whole year is, is ready for you to have uh, all the modules. Right. So no. So for the younger ages, we intentionally didn't put it digital. Um, so for the Bible, for the younger ages. But for the older ages, yes, we need to we need to work on it. But I think especially when it comes to the Bible study, it's like it's very challenging, um, and we're trying as much as we can, at least in the, their main Bible reading, that it will be done. You know, in the Bible, because the comments, no matter how, I mean, maybe they're sophisticated. And we try highlighting and under, but it's not the same. It's not the same. What we are, where I think we're like a year behind, but what we're hoping to finish when we do the Bible curriculum, so it will be book by book. So say Genesis, and then they have the room to write, it's the same text. And and then later on, I, I just saw um, the other day um, that they make those also for adults or, or youth, um, but I don't know how practical it is. So if they have, say, the book of Mark, and then every page they have the scripture, and then they have comment. But over, I mean, you're going to have to have a whole, I don't know how practical. It may be good, but like maybe, maybe we'll see the feedback if that's uh, as, as good. Um, okay. Uh, alternatives. So if it is difficult, that's why I left this towards the end, <laughs> like if I can't visit, because it does take a lot of time. Um, and so hopefully at least one of the servants in every class is visiting. Um, so what are the other servants doing if they can't? So say I work late, or work nights, or don't work, or <laughs> no, it's all work, um, or have the children. So what can, what can, what can I uh, do? Um, I mentioned that they're just to arrange the visits. 
So there could be one of the servants that does all that preparation work and calls the, the parents, organizes, the, finds out you know, the information and helps the other servant who is going out if they can. Um, or even following up on a, on a regular basis with the children. Um, try not to do it in order. I remember I was talking to one of the, in one of the churches I was serving. Um, so the kids were joking because their servant would take the list and then call them back to back. So they'd be with each other. So they'd get five minutes here, <laughs> and same questions. So I had to tell, I had to tell the servant, don't, don't like, tried to do it differently and on occasion so that it's more personal not just I'm finishing my my list of calls um, uh, because in the end it was just completely like you, you could tell high school kids that's it like they, they, they know <laughs> um, also uh, you may after the Sunday school um, to sit with them to one on one like you can pick from time to time if you can't do a visit and you're in the class so you said so and so I want to sit with you after just for 5-10 minutes tell your parents beforehand and then, you know, they'll be a little bit shocked. But then you can do some of those things. I noticed, tell them all the good things that they are good at, um, what you're happy about, see what they're reading in the Bible, see who's their favorite. Like, do uh, um, something very much more personal. It may open doors if you can't do it in, uh, the, uh, in, in their home. Um, also... Uh, in the special events, like I mentioned, we may organize, say you do something special for Halloween or one other occasions. During those, okay, and you're there, also you can pull aside one by one and do something, so just a follow-up. Um, so that helps. Sometimes it's hard to grab them from the group. <laughs> but if they know that you do this consistently and you're interested in that it's it's a mini visitation it's not the same but that's what happened with Zacchaeus right he was with the crowds they have a conversation and then at the end of the conversation he said okay I'm coming to your house <laughs> so there was an interaction um, that w led to later the visitation um, or tutoring or other other things uh, now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Glory be to him now and ever into the age of all ages. No questions, right? You want to turn this off with the questions? <laughs> yes, sure. Exactly, that's the reason. Because those people who are just going to sit, it's just so, first it sets the mo mood and tone of the visit. And um, you can go to the other things afterwards, but it will be blessed. It will be much for, so sometimes it's too much, right? So you'll be able to gauge, um, but at least it's on your mind. Like I know for me, I, I will, like I, I, try to push and push as much as I can, as immediate, <laughs> but um, like Abuna Tedros, because you see the value. Um, and sometimes, uh, like I said, it, it, there, there could be some urgency in the initial conversation. If there's a conversation, I usually use it even to grasp to make sure that what we were going to read in the Bible is fitting. Because they can bring up an issue that needs to be addressed. So yes, I will listen and process and see, okay, maybe... Uh, it should be this chapter in the Bible as opposed to, to something else. Or at least the comments, so that the comments can be fitting to what their needs are when we do the reflection. Another silly question. When we are preparing for the visitation, should we, like, we're calling and asking them if they're available, should we also kind of prepare them asking if they have their Bible to have it ready? Or to no, no, because that's the whole point. If they don't have it ready, so okay. I know. Right, right. If they don't have a Bible, they would go by a Bible. <laughs> like, no, so, so I mean, that's part of our as assessment to even know, like, where are you? Re Sometimes I ask them, what did you read yesterday? Um, just as a, but I will, I will use that time to also tell them I can only stay if it's a twenty-minute or fifteen-minute visit. I can only stay fifteen minutes because I have one, two, three, four after. So, and I'll uh, repeat it because they might not. And please tell them, you know, then they'll say, but we want you to eat. No, 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 I can't. Sorry, sorry, not this time. We'll, we'll arrange another time, I promise them. But uh, this time, because I have the other visits, 
it's it will be from and I try to be as as you know punctual if you come a little early no problem <laughs> but but not to come late so they know if you're coming at and they're still getting ready <laughs> that's when the social time comes or if the kids are upstairs um, then we can if the parents bring up something personal we tell them quietly that's that could work uh, and then we um, sometimes the kids hide they don't want to come <laughs> so I used to have one visit. Every time I go, the kid is in the room. Like, uh, first time they said asleep, second time sick, third time I'm like, no, no, we had that. This, is, yeah. But there was a, there was a problem, like obvious. <laughs> eventually it came. <laughs> eventually, um, one time at the end of the visit, and then and then later on when there's a relationship, there's no problem. But for those are the those are the people that we need. Um, you know. Uh, can, like clear visit. They they need they need the visit more than anyone. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. So is there like a minimum age, or or, or can we start? At yeah, I think so. Even with the, I think they will enjoy it. They as long as they're in the Sunday school, uh, and your time allows, and it can be very brief. And those can even be earlier, like Saturday early. <laughs> it doesn't have to be in the evening. But again, you see your schedule. Um, some of the servants can do early for, for, for us earlier is much better <laughs> with the, the priests um, I have a question. yes if, if I know that we're supposed to go two by two but if it's not possible then a, one servant can go into the visitation I, or, or what should I would check with Abuna because I know we had this issue okay. many, many times and sometimes Abuna would allow um, and sometimes he would discourage especially if there's a problem in the, the in the house so they would they will tell you no no but if again for the general visitations they they may they may allow and usually to um in case that you notice something funny like yeah you'll have to you make it quick and <laughs> because like i said it's we have to be um careful in in some some of the visitations yeah the more pitfalls i didn't, I didn't <laughs> uh One, better. If, if only one can go, we cannot, like, for example, I ask another servant. Yeah, Abuna, Abuna may allow, or even like if there's a servant who's responsible for that age group, like Abuna will allow or appoint, or even say if they're in seventh grade going to eighth, he may uh, say, yeah, the eighth grade can come with you, and, you know, it gives the, the awareness. Uh, or a servant who's already visited the family knows the family, so he may say, yeah, go with, with so and so. One time I went like uh, with the one of the uh, when I was a priest going with one of the servants of their Sunday school to their like their family, and I know the background already because I know the servant wasn't visiting. So I would go. We also took a Saturday. We covered all his Sunday school class. Um, so it was it was a very good chance. Um, uh, it helped me too because he was doing the driving. I was. <laughs> so we we were able to focus on the visits, um, and then he would do the follow up with the kids. Uh, so, so it was mutually. You know, we both did our work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have the same sentiment. Uh. <laughs> yes. Just a comment, if I yeah, sure. sure. Get really upset that like 